this incorrect information is practiced under the misinterpretation of scripture. Come on. So we have this these beautiful books, the Holy Quran and the Bible, that are filled with truth, but it's it's, it's misunderstood, you know, when it comes to the woman. So there are two culprits that I want to talk about. That's uh, Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-two. And, of course, in the Holy Quran, Surah 4, verse 34. In Ephesians, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as the Lord. Come on. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. So, it uses the word Lord. Lord is a person who has power and authority. Okay, so this is the definition that we're given. But for those of us who know a little bit about the etymology of Lord, this is a word that was used in the feudal system. Come on. In like the 12th century. It was right. used a long time ago where the man was referred to as Lord because he was the authority and even in uh, that particular realm of politics, the men were referred to as lords. So the etymology of the word lord comes from the old English word, I hope I get this right, is Halford, and it means bread keeper. Mm. So lord was commonly used during that time, but we are not in the 12th century. That's right, come on. <laughs> We're not in the 12th century, so, you know, <laughs> let's, we got to come to present time and, and come into a different perspective of the word Lord. Come on. All right, so, uh, we've been taught, you know, as Christians, when we grow up as Christians, when we say Lord, we're talking about God. Mm -hmm. Come on. So, if we use that term, with a man, or if we use that term with husbands, then we are saying that he is God in our home. And that can be, it could be used incorrectly if we do not understand what, what it really means for us to say Lord. So as Christians, we compare Lord with God, but as I had mentioned earlier in the feudal system, they use the word Lord, but we don't use it in the same, you know, with the same uh, terminology or the same connotation. So in the Holy Quran, we're familiar with um, men are the maintainers of women. But there has been mischief made no. with these scriptures. Mm. On January the 19th, we celebrated uh, Women's International Day. And there was a, an award ceremony, I think it's called the Women of Impact Award. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was, uh, he received an award. Mm -hmm. And we were blessed to hear his acceptance speech. And th this is what he said. These are some of the words from um, his excerpt, which is actually in the Final Call newspaper, last week's Final Call newspaper. He said, that the Holy Quran, which is the most magnificent book of guidance and scripture, says, this is God speaking, that the female is not like the male. She is one degree beneath the male. The minister continues, well, if you have a circumference of 360 degrees, one degree of difference is hardly noticeable at all. Oh, so says, Allah says in the Holy Quran, the believing men and the believing women, mm -hmm. the faithful men and the faithful women, the knowledgeable men and the knowledgeable women, the sacrificing men and the sacrificing women. God, when he puts that con conjunction and between men and women, in that conjunction it unites two parts. So we cannot have an impact. We cannot solve the problem with men in a state of sickness, in, in a state of sickness mentality, reducing women to
to less than that Almighty God Allah has designed for her. And this is what the Uncle Minister Louis Farrakhan says. So the scripture where it talks about degree is in the Holy Quran, Surah 2, verse 228. And so the Uncle Minister Louis Farrakhan reminds us that we, there's a mindset that needs to change. Come on, come on, so The man, that, he has a certain mindset. And he says that this, this has to be addressed before the woman is looked at properly. This resonated with me because I'm actually currently in a class called uh, Weather and Climate. And in this particular class, my professor, she's teaching us that the meteorologists and the scientists of this world do not know the exact measurements. When it, or they do not know what is exactly going to happen as it pertains to the universe and the weather and, and these aspects of, um, of the universe. All they can do is predict. Come on, come All on. they can do is come close to Come it. on, come yeah. on, come on. They can't really say, okay, well, um, it's going to rain. All they can do is just give us a general you know, estimation through their study and research, but they don't really know exactly. There's, the only person that really knows is a lot. However, it is so close that you really can't even tell, you know, the degree in their um, in their measurements. When and we're living in Memphis, Memphis is 35 degrees north and 90, 35 degrees north latitude and 90 degrees west longitude. So we can look on a global, we can look on a map and, and, and say, okay, this is Memphis at the latitude and the longitude and say that this is Memphis, Tennessee. But as far as being exact, only a lot knows exactly, you know, where we are. But it's so close that, you know, we consider it to be exact. So the Alma Minister Louis Farrakhan is trying to get us to see that this degree that the Holy Quran is talking about is not a degree like this much of a difference. Noticeable. You know, it is not even noticeable at come all. Come on, come on. So the man and the woman in conjunction, we are, we should be united. That's so right. you're living in a society where the only accent or the only attention is on the fact that, that you are lower or there is a degree lower. So, you know, we have to work on that. That's, that's, a, that's a misconception that we definitely have to uh, rid ourselves of. And then as women, we have to love ourselves and lift ourselves more so that we will not allow ourselves to Come on, be sis. mistreated and, and disrespected. That's right. So going to the misconception of hitting the woman. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that this is a result of the cares of the world choking out the life in our relationships, leaving us cold towards one another. Hmm. This leads to abuse. He said that the man cannot cope with the mind of the female. That's right. And so he beats her down. <clears throat> and how to give birth to a God, the young woman of Louis Farrakhan said, it is wrong for a man to beat a woman. When you beat a woman, when you beat a man, excuse me, you beat an individual. When you beat a woman, fool, this <laughs> come on, come on. You beat a nation. All right? Yes, right. So, it is not the duty of the man as a husband to hit his wife. That is wrong, as the uncle Minister Louis Farrakhan hmm. uh, teaches us. And you're not going to find too many MGT that's Come on. Not tolerated. Come on. Come on. <laughs> there are, I don't see too Come many on. MGT in the dojos. Yes, right. <laughs> They know too many katas to uh, uh, tolerate that kind of um, activity from her husband. So that is definitely a misconception that we can bust up immediately. Now, and this last one is very interesting because, you know, we, we as, or when a woman is a wife, her home is very important, you know. And, but, but it goes, 
to an extreme when someone tries to keep her in four walls every day, all day. This can create insanity. Right? Yes, right? So let's talk about this home being the woman's place. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the home was our base, not our place. Yes, yes. So what is a base? A base is a foundation. It is support. So when we think about a military base, what is a military base? America has base, bases stationed throughout the world. That's right. Well, and when you go to this particular base, you're going to find the soldiers who are being cared for. There is come on, there. Come on, come there on. There is uh, warmth there. Come on. That's there right. is shelter. There is, uh, this is where they study. This is where they sleep. This is where they rest. This is where they prepare uh, themselves to go out the next day and fight the enemy again. There's also admonition. <coughs> That's right. So when we think of what a base is as it relates to the woman, that is what the home is. The home is a base. It is a place where the family is supposed to be fed, where the family is supposed to be supported, where you receive rest, where you study, where you strengthen yourself, Come on. Where, where the children strengthen themselves, where the husband and the wife, where the family uh, begins, gets strong again so that they can go out the next day and fight and do it all over again. Come on, that's right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And do it all over again. That's what the base is. The base is not for the woman to sit in a four-wall building Come on. and cook and clean and do this all day long. Okay. Come on. So if you think about that, a woman can go insane. You know, she can lose her mind. That's right. Especially if she is not studying, if she's not engaged in any kind of self-improvement or self-development, that is, that, that's, that's wrong yeah, to do that yes. to a woman. Come on. Listen, Muslim world. So, the, there is something about the woman that is, that has, uh, where we have an innate responsibility. It's kind of like natural, an innate responsibility to secure the base. So this does not mean that we should look upon taking care of the home as a relegation or in, uh, an inferiority. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad is an architect of a new civilization. That's right, that's right. How does that relate to the base and the seven units? So, as I mentioned earlier, the base has seven aspects that are essential for survival. Come on. Those aspects are cooking. You Come gotta on. be able to eat. That's right. Cleaning. Knowing how to mend or knowing how to sew. Come but on. actually, in nature, knowing how to do something with your hands. Yeah. Come on. All right. Rearing children. Taking care of the husband. And knowledge of how to behave inside the house. Come on. And outside. That's Come right. On. Come on. Come on, sis. And as an MGT, we are taught that these are the seven units, but they are also known as the domestic arts. Now, the wrong meaning of the domestic arts is the things a woman is supposed to do inside <laughs> of her place. Come on, come on. That's that the wrong definition. Straighten it out. Unfortunately, this culture is common. It's too common among us, and it is perpetuating dysfunctional families. Yes. It is perpetuating a culture of poverty. That's right. It is perpetuating a culture of ignorance. And it is perpetuating a culture where we have too many women saddled with too many children. Yes, Ooh. yes. Come on, Come on. Come on Say that again. We are in need <laughs> of right guidance as it pertains to these domestic arts and why we shouldn't relegate them or dismiss them to an inferior position. Master Farad Muhammad said these words about us, about the black woman, the women in the wilderness of North America. 
He said, I can sit on top of the world and tell everyone that the most That's beautiful right. nation is in the wilderness of North America. That's right. But don't let me catch you weighing other than yourself in regards to living the life and weighing properly. Come on. That is a beautiful compliment. Mm -hmm. But why would he say it to us? What did he see in us that he would say <laughs> such things? Because the black woman has been in a miserable, destroyed condition for over 400 years. Yes. What do we reflect when we go out in the street? What do we see of, of our sisters when we mm. go out in the street? Come on, man. So Master Farah Muhammad had to see something else. Come on, come on. He had to have a vision. He had to, um, to know something about us that we did not know about ourselves. Come on, come on, sister. All right? So, we have in our lessons, lesson number one, question 14. What is the meaning of MGT and GCC? Muslim girls training and general civilization class. This was the training given to the women and girls in the wilderness of North America. How to keep house, how to rear their children, how to take care of their husbands, so cook and in general, how to act at home and abroad. Come on. These training units were named by our prophet and leader of Islam, W.D. Farah. So, in short, these seven units are the foundation Take your time. that we must master to become a God. Yes, yes. That's the goal. Alright, so some people may say, how can I become a God through cooking? <laughs> Come on. How can I become a God through sweeping the floor, cleaning the house? How can I become a God through that? I want to, uh, to tell you all, uh, I want to talk to you all about this movie. One of my favorite movies is called The Karate Kid, and it stars Ralph Macchio. And I forgot the other yeah. gentleman's name. I think they call him Mr. Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi. Mm -hmm. So, this movie is about a young boy who was being bullied. He had moved to a different state. And it was just him and his mom. And he was a teenager that uh, had moved, went to a new school, and he was being bullied. They were jumping on this young man. And the particular style of fighting that was used on him was karate, or it was martial arts. So after he had gotten so tired of getting his butt whooped every day, <laughs> he went to his mom, he was like, Mom, I got to learn how to fight. I got to learn how to defend myself. And she was like, you know, we just moved here. I'm really not, I, I, I feel sorry that you're going through this, but I don't know, you know, who I can get to teach you, you know, how to fight. So there was a, a, an old man that was listening to the conversation, and he intervened. So he talked to the young man. His name in the movie, it was Daniel. So he talked with the young man, and he built a rapport with him, and he started to talk with them and invited them over, and he said, you know, I would teach you how to fight. And uh, he, Daniel, he was excited. He was excited about learning how to do all the, the kicks and the, and the blocks and all of these different colors and different strategies of martial arts that are so magnificent and so beautiful. When we see it in action, it just looks like a beautiful piece of art. So he was excited about that. So on his first day of training, Mr. Miyagi gave him something to clean. You know, so he was like, okay, well, all right. Come on, break it down. Go ahead, we'll go with this. I got to clean something. So he, and his assignments were so <coughs> laborious. I mean, he had to do like the whole wall and the whole house and all the cars. So he had to, he had to wash all the cars and paint all the boards and paint his whole house. But... Mr. Miyagi would give him specific instructions on how to do the assignment. Come on, that's right. He would say, wax on. Come on. Wax, wax on. off. That's right. 
Breathe in. Breathe in. Breathe out. That's right. And he was just kind of, he walk away, wax up, wax out. And Daniel would be like, I got to do this again. I got to continue this. So, but he was steadfast. He was patient. And the young man kept working. Sore. He would go home late at night. Sore. Uh, tired. Bruised. And discouraged. Because he thought he was going to learn how to fight. And one night he was so upset that he was like, I'm done with this. I'm not gonna, I'm not going through this anymore. I'm come on, come on. I'm gonna slave for this man. Motion, I'm motion. not gonna do this anymore. Waxing so stuff. in in his anger, uh, Mr. Miyagi just tried to calm him down and say, Look, you are learning. You are learning how to fight. And uh, uh, Daniel was like, you know, I'm done with this. I'm not going to do this because you're not teaching me how to fight. So, Mr. Miyagi said, okay, well, let me show you that you know how to fight. Hmm. So, he made, he let him calm down, and he taught him, once again, he told him to breathe. And then, he said, show me, wax on, wax off. Then, but Daniel was mocking, he was like, wax on, oh, wax off, okay, what does that mean? No, he said, no, show me, wax on, wax off. Hmm. And then, Mr. Miyagi struck him. And he realized that in his constant motion, it became like innate where he was able to naturally block come on, come this on, come man's on. Come on. <laughs> So he was like naturally just blocking it, going up and down and blocking the kicks. And he realized that Mr. Miyagi wasn't just teaching him like his opponent was learning. His opponent was an aggressor. His opponent was a vain person, yes, selfish. Yes, yes. So he didn't understand the real principle of the beautiful martial arts that Daniel was learning. Mr. Miyagi was instilling within him the character, the principle, the patience, yes. the time, the love, not to just take life, but to also understand that you got to preserve <coughs> life and know when to fight. Come on. So in these very basic, simple, easy things that Mr. Miyagi was teaching Daniel. He learned not only how to fight, but he learned how to master and execute the cosmos. Come on, come on, so come, I on say come on. That, come on. So, so I say that to say this. That is the seven units. The seven units, they seem simple. They seem easy. You cook a little meal, you wash a few Come on, dishes. come on. You're doing a little something here, but come on. it's actually Master Farad Muhammad is bringing something out of that's us right, that's right, that's right. that is going to help us to become gods. And we have to master these seven units. So it's more, we go beyond just what we do in the four walls. Come on. It is changing our mind. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's changing our the composition of our DNA. We are literally becoming somebody else when we study these seven units and continue to practice them. We are becoming somebody else. We're evolving into someone else. Come on. So I say to a brother <laughs> <laughs> who is married or in marriage to an MGT, if she can cook. If she can sew, if she knows how to rear her children, you should say Alhamdulillah. That's right, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. But her training doesn't stop with feeding. That's right. Come on, come on, sister. Her training does not stop with cleaning for you. You are witnessing a girl evolving into a God. Come on, that's come right. on. This training will realize the vision of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad that was shared with us by Mother Tainata Muhammad when she explained to us that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad saw this big group of women in white. They were in a conference and they were in a meeting and they were captains and they were leaders amongst the Nation of Islam and they were wise and scholars being sent all over the world as ambassadors of righteousness and as ambassadors of true architecture or the work oh. that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad 
is is involved in that we are a part of. Yes. So when you read your Bible and it says, "Behold, I make all oh, things, things new. new." Come on, it's come on. It's talking now. about the woman. Come on. It's talking about that's right. Our set of units. That's it's right. That's it's right. Talking about the MGT class. Come on. So this is where we begin, and I I pray that. You were able to hear something. I was kind of, I just kind of moved through it kind of quick. I didn't have a lot of time, but this is a very pregnant subject. It has yes. a lot. Um, I pray that for any sister who is interested and who has questions to come out to the class. Come out to the class on Saturdays at 9 a.m. And we could sit and we could talk more about this opportunity that Master Brahman is offering us. So um, that is all I have, and I thank you all so much for this opportunity, and I will bring Brother Tim back up.